I don't know if it was the contrast of all the brilliant colors and how smoothly they glided across freshly painted sheet metal, or the mesmerizing way in which a paintbrush could be manipulated to effortlessly create perfect looking lines and letters, or most likely it was the combination of my two lifelong passions, painting and race cars. Whatever it was, something about watching race cars being hand lettered absolutely captivated me when I was a kid. As far back as I can remember, I was always building, drawing, or painting something. From the first minute I watched a race car get hand lettered, I knew that was something I had to do. I was fascinated with the entire process and how a race car could gain an identity within hours, going from a blank car to something that almost had a personality, thanks to a skilled sign painter with a couple brushes and a few cans of paint. Hand lettering is a subject that is near and dear to my heart. The first time I ever earned money was in the late 1970s, painting the raised white letters on the tires of my cousin Steve Vessel's Nova Superstock. The first actual race car I lettered was a blue number 88 hobby stock for Howard Barker back in 1988. As this photo shows, there was plenty of room for improvement. Under the name Mark Signs, I lettered hundreds of race cars over the years, as well as numerous items for the Hibbing Raceway, including dozens of infield signs and even the infamous boat. Now I don't intend to upset anyone or ruffle any feathers, I just want to call it as I see it, from my perspective, as someone with over 30 years of hand lettering experience. Before the prevalence of computers and vinyl machines, race car lettering was carried out by hand. Designs were either laid out directly onto the cars themselves or sketched on paper and then transferred onto the car with powder through a series of tiny holes, a system known as pouncing. Specialized paints, brushes, and various other accessories were then used to meticulously add color to an otherwise blank canvas, thus bringing the car to life. In the days before vinyl lettering, many cars had rather unflattering, homegrown paint jobs. In order to have a good looking car that really stood out, an experienced sign painter was a necessity. I am a self-taught sign painter who does not claim to be an expert. There are many professionals who are extremely more talented and knowledgeable than I am. However, I did log in many years behind a paintbrush, spending long hours sitting in front of race cars in cold, dimly lit garages on school nights, cutting my teeth at the craft before getting the results that I was happy with. And I am still learning and improving my skills to this very day. Following are a few sign painters that I am familiar with through my experiences. However, there were several others in the region as well. Some of my earliest race car memories are of watching Joe Posernich letter the Vessel Brothers cars every spring during the late 1970s and early 1980s. Back in those days, he was one of the premier race car sign painters around, and I believe he was heavily sought after for his services. If you wanted a sharp looking car, you had better make an appointment with him before he was booked up. I recall asking Joe about his paint brushes, and him telling me that they were made out of camel hair and he proceeded to spin a tale about how he had to travel to the Middle East and chase down camels in the desert to pluck hairs out of their tails so he could make his own brushes. One time, while I was captivated watching him work his magic, he turned around with a brush in his outreached hand, 
looked me dead in the eye and said, here, you can finish painting this. In that instant, I didn't know he was joking and it scared the heck out of me. The thought of finishing what he started was awfully intimidating for a young kid. Joe must have been quite the storyteller and BSer. Perhaps painting isn't the only hobby that I picked up from him. Joe was my first and greatest inspiration to pursue the fine art of sign painting. He lived in Buell, Minnesota and was a World War II veteran before becoming an art teacher for the Nashwalk school system. Joe passed away in 1996 at the age of 72. Too bad there was such an age difference between us, otherwise I might have known him better, perhaps even painted with him a time or two. When I was growing up, I often hung around Charlie Gargano's garage where Don Oz's six-cylinder cars were housed. I remember seeing the phrase, lettered by Ken Sweetnam, painted above the rear window of those old white Chevelles. I believe Ken must have lettered a few cars back then, as is evident by this photo of him lettering one of Dick Wenin's race cars. Another sign painter who made a huge impression on me was my cousin Scott Kittner. He called his business Scott's Designs, although he teamed up with Jeff Steggy for a while and lettered many cars under the name The Warriors. I remember watching Scott letter my brother Todd's hobby stocks as well as numerous other cars in the mid to late 1980s. It was the only time I witnessed an electro-pounce machine in action, which used high voltage and a metal pointer to zap holes through the paper pattern. He was also the first person to introduce me to the once great world of one-shot lettering enamel, which is a whole other story that I won't get into. Scott is one of the most talented sign painters that I know. The quality of his work was top-notch and his lettering style was always so natural with a great flow to it. Like most sign painters of the era, he eventually transitioned to multi-layer vinyl where each color came from a separate roll. He often combined both paint and vinyl to get the best of both worlds. Here we are helping him apply vinyl to one of my brother Jay's late models in the year 2000. Scott got away from the trade before single layer printed wraps became common. What drew you toward race car lettering? Uh, racing's in the Kittner blood. Started going to the racetrack, kind of liked what I seen, and there wasn't that many people that were lettering cars. And then I, uh, Bobby started racing, and my mom didn't want to letter the car, so I did. And then we did Brad Hansen's and Brian King's that year. What's your opinion on hand lettering versus vinyl lettering? It's more authentic, nicer, I think, you know, I mean, I went from hand lettering to running a computer and it's when you hand paint just let it go. It's more personalized. I mean you grab a brush and whatever comes out of it that's what you get. What and when was the last race car you lettered? Uh, Bobby Kittner's car in 2017. That orange and black one? Yeah. So many cars out there look like you yeah, had a bucket full of paint you just threw it in front of a fan and you know it, that's what it looks like and you can't read it from the stands I mean nicest cars I did I think but you know just simple big letters a little outline shadow that's all you needed local retired racer Eddie Oz 
the son of Hibbing Hall of Fame member Don Oz, not only was a successful racer, but also a sign painter who hand lettered tons of cars back in the day under the name Oz Signs. These are just a fraction of the cars that Ed hand lettered. At some point during the mid to late 90s, I'd estimate that well over half the cars competing at Hibbing and Grand Rapids were lettered by either Ed or myself. During my early days of lettering, I admired Ed's work, and I remember striving to get my script letter style to look as good as I felt his was. He lettered many signs and vehicles for Hibbing Raceway as well. Dale Lampy operates a local sign shop called Lampy Signs. He had his own distinct, loose and free-flowing style, oftentimes incorporating a dry brush technique to blend colors together. He has lettered many race cars by hand, vinyl, and a combination of each method. It's been well over a decade since he regularly hand-lettered race cars, but he does continue to letter a car or two each year, mostly with vinyl. I grew up in a body shop and in high school our uh, shop teacher was a sign painter and on the side and he got guys interested in the sign painting and I went to Detroit Lakes for uh, the sign lettering and design program after I graduated from high school and just been in it ever since. I grew up around street rods and everything so the pinstriping and then friends had race cars and I was just kind of involved with my buddies and stuff and, and I lettered so I wound up lettering race cars. What is your opinion on hand lettering versus vinyl lettering? I do both. Primary, I, I love the, the hand lettering. Um, I still have guys 30 years later will only have hand painted pinstriping and hand painted lettering on their semi trucks. It's a, it's a dying trade. Um, it's the nicest lettering you can have. This spring I did a couple bodies for what's always been the neighbor kid just because he I babysat him when he was a kid so Kevin Celine's car I do every year I've done his car for as long as he's raced. Now do you do those paint or vinyl or a combination? A combination the graphics are uh, are sprayed and hand pin striped and then also lettering is vinyl. Why did you make the switch from straight complete lettering to incorporating more vinyl in your work? Just their production time in, in the business making a living, not just the stock cars, but just the production time. The vinyl was quicker. It's not as durable, in my opinion, but it is quicker. So it appears that vinyl can do a better job of keeping racers supplied with lettering, especially in this large volume world of multiple bodies being installed every season. A traditional sign painter would be hard pressed keeping up with the current demand. In part two of this video, we'll be taking a look at a few more local sign painters and further explore the intricacies of hand lettered race cars. <laughs>